Hey everybody, what's up? White trash version of Garden Answer here for another exciting uh, video. That's a joke. Don't get too offended by that. That somebody's left that in my comments, and I was just like, well, I guess I don't know. Anyhow, we're back in the garden today again for the first time, and it feels like a long time. Um, I've just been having a little bit of trouble getting motivated, if I'm going to be honest with y'all. I just really haven't felt like doing anything in the garden. It has been so incredibly hot here. I'm talking like heat index up like 114 and stuff like that. And especially if you ain't got no air conditioner. I don't know. It is not fun. So I thought we would take a quick, well not so quick, look around the garden. This video is going to be a little bit longer because I'm not quite sure when the next time that I'll have access to a laptop will be. I mean, I'll have my phone, internet, and everything like that, but uh, I won't be able to have uh, use of a computer for a few weeks, I want to say. Maybe uh, longer, maybe shorter, I don't know. Obviously, I'm going to try to make things work the best I can. But uh, for the most part, everything in the garden looks pretty good. I can't complain about it, that's for sure. The amaranth are looking really nice and of course my sunflowers are still blooming finally some of them are starting to branch out which is nice because that's what i expect it to begin with and it's annoying when it doesn't i have a lot of the gold finches and things you know playing in the sunflower bed and eating all the seeds that's fine i don't want sunflower seeds i think for the most part saving sunflower seeds can be a major pain in the butt so um no big deal there they can have it i actually like really like watching the birds fly in and out of the sunflowers and everything. Yesterday, guys, you wouldn't have believed, I saw a cardinal and it was in my tomatoes. I was like, that cardinal's eating my tomatoes. I am so mad about this, right? And as it turns out, he was down there eating hornworms and I tried, he was pecking at the hornworms trying to pick them off. Actually, there was only one hornworm, but anyway, I ran to get my camera as fast as I could and by the time I got back, he was already gone, but it was so cool. I know it's like, Side note, but I thought I'd tell you about it. Anyway, it's whatever. So in this video, I'm going to do my best to uh, label everything because I know you guys like to see what these varieties actually are. I know I've been doing kind of a bad job about that lately, but I'm working on it. Also in this video, this is the last time that you will see the zinnia bed in its current state. Uh, the zinnia bed got blown over by a storm a couple days ago, and it is just completely in disarray they are just thrown all over the ground and i ain't gonna worry about setting them back up and everything they had powdery mildew to begin with so i'm gonna go ahead and take all these out and replace them with a fall crop got plenty of fall crops oh uh by the way if you haven't seen it i wrote an ebook it's something that i've always wanted to do and i thought hey why not I just go ahead and give it a try maybe somebody will want to look at it maybe they don't that's fine Either way, it's no big deal. Uh, if you do want to take a look at it, it's free. If you want the ebook, just uh, look in the description and there's a Google form for it. Anyhow, in this video, I really also wanted to focus on the not so glamorous part of gardening. Uh, since I have already started thinking about my fall garden, it's also time to start thinking about uh, clearing things out and making more space because that's part of having a teeny tiny garden is that you have to constantly be in a state of trying to figure out what goes where and how to put it in there when or something like that. Uh, it is a lot of work in terms of taking things out, moving them around, and all that stuff. So you'll see more of that later on in the video, I think. Don't quote me on that. I always kind of do the audio first and then do the video later just because that's what's convenient for me. I know it's not the best way to do it, but that's just how things kind of seem to play out for the most part. I um, also am getting some really good harvest still, pretty much on the regular, lots of tomatoes. I cannot even begin to tell y'all how many tomatoes I've been getting, and uh, I've just been giving them away. I know that's like, oh, why are you giving all your food away? Well, I just, I don't have the storage for it. I don't have anywhere to put it, and I don't want it to go to waste. So, luckily there are lots of people who want to take this stuff. I've also been picking uh, lots and lots and lots of sweet peppers. It seems like I just, you know, kind of wade into this uh, big old mass, green mass of uh, food plants, vegetable plants, and there you never really know what you're going to come out with, uh, and 
I've not been disappointed. And I'm definitely thankful for that because these things are growing and they look beautiful and they're delicious. I've been snacking on them too, of course. But for the most part, I'm just really happy, especially with these sweet peppers. Like, what is going on? Seriously, listen, I've grown plenty of sweet peppers in my time. And for the most part, they get to be a pretty good size. And you know, oh, they taste so good. This is so great. But the peppers this year are stinking huge. These things are huge. Like, some of these peppers are, like, way bigger than the things that I see in the grocery store. And they are robust and they have really thick walls and I am just so impressed by this. I don't know if it's the variety or the weather or how I planted them or my fertilizer or what is making the difference, but oh my goodness, I love it. I know a lot of people are like, why aren't you waiting for them to ripen? They should turn colors. Well, I mean, honestly, I'm not going to have access to my garden for about a week or so. Uh, since I posted this video, so I just wanted to go ahead and pick a bunch of things because uh, lately I've been having some snail troubles in my peppers. That is so weird. I've never had snails in my peppers, but I mean, they're just sitting on the fruits. Like, what? What are you doing? Get out of here. Um, but I did want to pick a bunch of them before I didn't have the chance to over, you know, the next week or so. Anyhow, in an attempt to get ready for fall, I've began to clear out the corn bed. You saw in the last video, I think it was the last video, don't quote me on that, uh, that we picked all our corn and it was a little bit of a disappointment, but you know, at the end of the day, it is what it is. Anyhow, I'm clearing out the corn bed because we ain't got time for corn just to be sitting over there doing nothing. So uh, we're gonna plant some crops in here for the fall. Now, this corn bed had a lot more corn in it than I had thought, and clearing out the socks and everything was really kind of a pain, but in the long run, I know it will be worth it, especially with our uh, limited space that we have. Uh, it was definitely really hot the day I was doing all this cleaning out, and um, for the most part, when I clear out these landscape fabric beds, it's not too bad. It's really mainly just pulling up the main plants, whatever plants in that bed, um, by the stalk and pulling it out roots and all usually and in some cases there will be kind of like a creeping ground cover weed that has taken over the like landscape fabric in this case I had a lot of creeping Charlie Ugh, that stuff is everywhere in my yard it's practically impossible to get rid of and uh, it really just kind of crawls along my black landscape fabric and forms this really thick mat of weeds. Now the mat of weeds is really kind of obnoxious but the good news is for the most part um, it's pretty easy to pull out because you know it's only rooted in a couple places and most of it is kind of just like a mat like that you know you can just kind of kick and it comes out in a clump. It's hard. To, I'm, sh I'm pretty sure I didn't do a very good job of explaining that but uh, if you've ever had it I'm sure you probably know what I'm talking about. It's really nice that this landscape fabric keeps it from rooting everywhere it touches the ground. Uh, really helps controlling that. So that's definitely something that is a huge positive for me at least because ain't nobody got time to be pulling all these weeds out. I'm for real. The good thing about this fabric also is now that my first kind of crop rotation has finished up, I don't have to till this spot again. Uh, it's pretty much ready for, you know, new seeds to start growing in it. And um, as soon as they start growing in it, I'll be able to fertilize it and whatnot. And we'll be good to go. You'll remember I started some of my fall seeds in the uh, 2 liter containers and milk jugs and things like that. I still got those. They're still growing out here. But it has been so blazing hot out here that a lot of the stuff is just, you can tell, <laughs> is not looking so hot. So there's a good chance I'm going to be starting a bunch of these things in my house uh, and just keeping them in like a, I don't know, I guess a south facing window, just keeping them in a window. I don't know if it had to be south facing in the summer. I don't know. Anyway, uh, I'm just going to keep them in the only window I got in my house and hopefully the heat in the house won't be too bad for them. I mean, my house is pretty dang hot too, so I don't really know what to do there, but that's besides the point. We're just going to do the best we can with what we got. The world is not a perfect place. Sometimes you just got to make do with what you got and just accept it. It's alright. 
You know, maybe we'll do better next time. Maybe we won't. We'll just cross our fingers, hope for the best. And, you know, if it comes out good, then great. If it don't, it don't. Can't lose sleep over this stuff. You can't beat yourself up for stuff that's out of your control. I have to tell myself that all the time. If it's out of your control, it's not your fault. You can't beat yourself up over it. Enough ranting. Okay, back to the, uh, the garden update. Guys, when you're working outside and it is so hot, please make sure you are drinking enough water and stuff. I am so guilty of this. Here I was supposed to turn the camera off and I thought it was off and I totally forgot. So here y'all can just enjoy this nice footage of me drinking a delicious genetically modified uh, energy sports drink. Great. Why settle for GMO foods when I can have genetically engineered drinks too? Awesome. Um, in addition to clearing out a lot of the beds, I also started some more of my fall flower seeds. Uh, these are the ones that are just going to go in a windowsill in my house. I have this Brighton Rock Snapdragon. Uh, it doesn't look like the, you know, type of flower that somebody would want in their wedding bouquet. But it's pretty cool. It's a kind of a bicolor. If you've ever seen the peppermint stick zinnia, the kind of paint splashed look, you know, multiple colors. Uh, this Snapdragon, I believe, is the same kind of pattern, you know, like a solid color with kind of splashes across it. And it should be really cool to see if we can get it to grow because I am terrible at growing Snapdragons. I've only grown like one successful Snapdragon in my whole life. And one of these days, we're going to figure it out. I swear, we are going to figure it out how to grow snapdragons. And we are going to be like, woo, we are so good at gardening. Yes, I am so happy. I'm also planning another round of Canterbury Bells. This one's going to go in my house. Also, these aren't going to grow These aren't going to go under grow lights or anything. I don't have any grow lights. We're just going to wait till these sprout. And then we're going to move them outside into a cool, shady place. I started Canterbury Bells uh, a couple weeks back. They germinated outside, but the bugs got to them while they were still teeny tiny. So I'm going to give them a little bit of a head start in my house to see if they'll do a better job at fighting off anything that wants to eat them. So there's that to take into account. I also have some Icelandic poppies here. You know, I'm starting to think maybe I'll just direct sow these Icelandic poppies in the fall. I've always heard that Icelandic poppies are technically biennials. And so I wouldn't start them earlier, but I'm just having trouble with germination. They've been in the fridge. I should have mentioned the other two had been in the fridge also for about a week or so. Um, we're just going to play it by ear and see what happens. Up next, I am uh, going to put this columbine in my container here. Now this columbine, the seeds were put in the fridge for a week. And then after that, I put them in a paper towel, a wet paper towel in a Ziploc bag at room temperature. On I think it's 713 is when I did that. Today is 725 is when I finally got them to germinate. Uh, these seeds, you can barely tell, have germinated. They have just kind of cracked open in this. And uh, I'm just going to sprinkle them on the top of the surface of the soil. Other than that, uh, I just hope for the best again. I have no experience with columbine, but hey... At least we got the seeds to germinate. That's more than I actually expected because some of these can be really tricky, especially with the flower seeds. I know for the most part, vegetables are pretty cut and dry, like stick it in the dirt, it grows. And flowers can be definitely a lot more frustrating in terms of, oh, you need to stratify that first. And, oh, you need to nick the seed coat. Oh, you need to soak those or clearly they will not germinate. Like, I get it, okay? Um... That's the best advice I can give you guys. Also, in the same note, I have these delphinium seeds. With the delphiniums, I put the seeds in the fridge for about a week, week and a half. Then I put them in a damp paper towel in room temperature. Did this same day, 713. There are no signs of germination. Uh, when I don't have any germination after cold and after moist treatment, my next step is to put them in darkness. So uh, now I'm going to put the delphinium seeds that have not germinated. None of them have germinated. And I'm going to put them, surface sow them into this uh, bottle here. And after I put them into the bottle, I am just 
gonna wrap it up in a plastic garbage bag and leave it at room temperature in my house. Hopefully my house is not too hot. It's too hot for me. <laughs> it feels like, at least it feels like it's too hot for me. Maybe it's too hot for the seeds too. Uh, we're just gonna see what happens here. And if this is a success or a failure, I'm sure I'll let you know at one point or the other because sooner or later I'm gonna have to figure out how to actually germinate delphinium seeds because hey, it's not enough that it's difficult to grow delphiniums, you know, actually where I live after you've germinated them. Hey, let's make germination really difficult too. It's times like these when I realize like, man, you really have no idea what you're doing. Like, why do you not have like a neighbor that can teach you how to do all this? You have no idea what you're doing. <sighs> I don't know. Anyhow, back to the whole uh, getting the garden ready for uh, fall. Fall, is that what season we're on? I completely lost track of it. Uh, being totally honest, sometimes I just get caught up and I'm just like, I have no idea what I'm doing. I can't remember what I need to do next. I don't know what I've already done. Anyhow, this was the patch. If you remember, I had that kind of bad patch in the yard. It had things like the uh, shell peas, English peas in it. It's not really a good spot. It had a lot of crawdads and various crustaceans because of the water table. And it's really kind of clay here. It's not really that great. I let it kind of grow up over the summer. I had some wheat in here. Hopefully that made a difference. But anyway, I'm just going to take my little, I guess, cultivator or whatever this is. And as you can see, uh, I got the corn stalks that I just pulled out stuck in the blades of the cultivator. And so I had to take a second in the 100 degree heat and uh, pull that out and I was not happy about it. But anyway, uh, you know what? Things like that just make us stronger. Let's just move on. I took a break to take a drink of water. Anyway, once it's been uh, tilled up, I grabbed some of my black plastic landscape fabric. The black plastic fabric had uh, previously not been used here, so I had to cut it down to size and get some of those uh, landscape staples and kind of just spread it out and make sure it's going to cover the whole area. I didn't really exactly measure it very well, but you know what? It's close enough. I am not going to lose any kind of sleep over this. Um, for the most part, it's going to get the job done. Maybe I'll have to take a weed eater through there every once in a while to make sure things don't get too out of control. But I'm just going to play it by ear because that's pretty much what I always do. Next up in frustration because it's been so hot and... I don't know where I'm going to plant anything. I decided to direct sow a lot of stuff. So for the things that I'm going to direct sow right now, I have some cilantro. This is some cilantro that I saved from seed. You'll see that, I think, at the end of the video. I have some iceberg lettuce. I have some onions, of course. Some leeks. Some radicchio. Some um, kohlrabi. I think Brussels sprouts. Of course, more onions, cauliflower, broccoli, and some carrots. And all those things are just going to be direct sowed. Basically, I went around to the holes in my landscape fabric. These holes are at a spacing of about 9 inches apart. Ideally, you probably would want, I don't know, 12-inch spacing maybe for brassicas and things like that. But... You know what, these holes were already set at 12 inches apart and I grew the uh, broccolis and everything at 12 inches apart in the springtime and they seem to do pretty well. So I am just going to stick with this same planting space and overall I think we should be fine. If you are one of those people who cringe when I put way too many seeds in the holes, you might want to look away right now. You know what, the hotter I am and the more tired I am, the more reckless I get with how many seeds I put in each hole. I know it's a terrible habit. I wish I could do better. I will do better in the future. I'm going to work on it. But just look away for now, okay? So I'm just planting some broccoli here. Uh, lots of seeds in each hole. And of course, I'm going to make sure I give that a really, really, really good water afterwards. And uh, for the first week or so, I was giving this a really good water almost every single day. The weather has just been, you know, unforgiving and we haven't had much rain. So I'm making sure that these little seedlings get water every single day to make sure that they grow and sprout so that we can kind of, 
nurture them along to become beautiful broccolis in the fall. Hopefully, I will have enough time. Hopefully, I've planted these right. I don't know. I still doubt myself after all these times of actually growing things. I still doubt myself all the time. Uh, here we are a couple of days later, and hooray, we've got sprouts. So we're doing something right. And pretty soon, I'll be having to cover these up with a floating row cover so that the cabbage moths do not find them. Because they seem to find everything, and that's not even an exaggeration. Like, they can find the smallest little seedlings, and it drives me crazy. I'm like, this is good. I'm feeling good. We're going to have a good fall crop, and all of a sudden, cabbage worms everywhere. Ugh. Anyway, uh, here's a view of our fall garden so far. Not much going on. The first row next to the hay has some flowers in it. There's some hollyhock seedlings in there and some foxglove seedlings. The next row in the middle has, of course, my chrysanthemums and the shizo and some carrots. And then it's broccoli. And then next to that is some cauliflower and Brussels sprouts and some iceberg lettuce heads. I think. Don't quote me on that. Like I said, the zinnias have been... <laughs> taken out of the garden. I know it's a total bummer, but I really did enjoy having them while they were here. That is something that happens pretty often in my garden is that uh, I get storms here and the tall plants, it's just not a good combination. Tall plants like, you know, cosmos and zinnias and even sunflowers sometimes can't handle the strong winds of storms and they tend to blow over. That's Definitely one of the reasons why a lot of people use the horizontal trellis netting in their cut flowers to keep them standing upright. If we would have done that, we would have been set. But like I said, these zinnias were on their way out anyway. So it was nice that we got to enjoy them while they were here. Uh, also, the butterflies have been going crazy for these things and the hummingbirds, which I really enjoy. I think my best guess is I'm going to put some lettuce where the zinnias were. I think it's already got the good spacing for it. It's like a 3 inch, 6 inch spacing or something like that. So likely I'm going to fill this with a mix of different lettuces. And uh, probably going to be doing that pretty soon even though it's still a little bit hot here and still a little bit early. But you know what? I hate having just an empty space in the garden. We've got to use every square inch that we can find to grow something awesome. Last but not least, real quick, I just wanted to show y'all, I did a lot of seed saving today. Also, uh, bachelor's buttons are all completely dried out. Most of these have already fallen on the ground, and I got seeds everywhere. You can see why they volunteer so easy, because these things just make so many seeds, and ain't even funny. Also, uh, took the time to gather a lot of calendula seeds. I think calendula seeds are one of the coolest seeds, especially, you know, they're easy to save, especially if you're like, a complete beginner and you're not sure like how do I even find the seed calendula seeds are always just so funky looking and cool uh, but you do have to get them at the right time because if you don't get them at the right time in most cases they already done fell all over the ground and uh, you missed out so that's just one of those things also saved some fever few seeds and some straw flowers I think straw flower seeds always look so cool they kind of look like dandelions in a lot of ways, you know, with the uh, kind of, you know, with the seeds that blow around in the wind. That's pretty neat. That's really about it. I hope y'all like this video. If you did, please hit subscribe and share it with somebody. I'm just trying to grow the channel, see what we can do. I hope y'all are having a real great day, and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye, guys.